time in the book of Romans, it's obviously uh, a book that we will not soon forget. And it will not be a book that as you conclude it, you put it on the shelf and you never refer back to it. It's obviously a textbook of our faith. And it is something that, that doesn't just come and, and we look at it one time and say, okay, I know all those things and now it's time to move on to something else. That's certainly not true with this book or any other book really in the Bible, but it stands out. And as the book of Romans ends, it ends with a beautiful doxology. You know, uh, as we, we sing at times about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we give praise unto our God for what He has done, not only in saving us, but providing for us over and over again. A doxology. They're found throughout the scripture. Sometimes a writer is so overwhelmed with gratitude that it just seems like that he, he breaks into an inspired praise to God for his goodness or his grace. And in the midst of this letter to the Roman church, the, the Apostle Paul declares such times, like in Romans chapter 11, verses 33 through 36, he says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who became his counselor? Or who has first given to him that he might be paid back to him again? From him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. And then likewise, in the middle of this letter to the Ephesian believers, Paul interjects a doxology that it's often used to conclude worship services. And it says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we could think, and I always like to put in two ass, but to him who is exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And again, here in the closing verses of the book of Romans, you find that unique praise to our Lord as he recaptures the major theme of his letter. And perhaps at this particular moment in time, he reaches over and he takes the pen from uh, Thirtius and, and Paul touches on the gospel that establishes men and proclaims Jesus Christ and reveals God's mystery. Let's look at Romans chapter 16, the closing verses this morning together, verses number 25 through 27. Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which has been kept secret for long ages past but now is manifested and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandments of the eternal God you hear the crescendo building has been made known to all nations leading to the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ the glory forever amen and in that little doxology those three verses in the conclusion of the great book of Romans you find that the Apostle Paul lays out the fact that the gospel is that which establishes us. It is the gospel that proclaims Jesus Christ. And it is the gospel that was the mystery of God from times past. 
Let's look first in verse number 25, the very beginning of the verse, where he says that it is the gospel that establishes men. You see, God is able. God has sufficient power to establish anyone who calls upon his name. To establish. What does that mean? That he has the power to establish us. Well, it is that word that means to make stable. Before we came to Christ, we were tossed to and fro with any wind that would come off, any teaching that might come off, any, any hope of anything that might be uh, that we could build our life upon. But it is the gospel of Jesus Christ that establishes us. It makes us firm. It makes us stable. It makes us able to stand. No matter what the winds of this world might bring, it is the gospel that we place our faith and our trust in. And it's in this context it refers to being mentally settled. Firmly rooted in the truth of the gospel. And that is so contrary to anyone that is outside of Christ. For, the, for those that are outside of Christ, they long for a better job, a better house, a better car, a bigger boat, um, a, a nicer motorcycle, a, a newer airplane. I mean, they're longing for something always seeking and never able to find. But when a person comes to faith in Jesus Christ, that totally changes. And it changes the inside of a man's heart. And it is through the gospel that God is able to establish our minds and establish our hearts in the truth, to settle us, to ground us, to make us firm in Him. In praying for God to establish the believers at the church in Ephesus, the Apostle Paul petitions the Lord. And I'd like to look at Ephesians chapter 3, 16 through 19. And I have Jay maybe pop that up on the screen for us. It says, I pray that out of his glorious riches that he might strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being. So that Christ might dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you might be filled to the measure of all of the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Oh, the fact that when we are in Christ, we are grounded in that which is of God. I don't know if you noticed this in reading the particular text, but he refers to the gospel as my gospel. My gospel. You know, he personalizes it. He drew it into himself. And he just captured it within his own mind and in his own body. But in referring to my gospel, he's not um, saying that this is exclusive just to me. But when you study what he's talking about in the gospel, you find out very quickly that this is the same gospel of Peter and James and John. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the good news that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. You know, that's an applause line. That's an amen line. That's a time in which we just have to stop to gather it all in as we, we think of the gospel the gospel that 
that says that if I buy 